guys. I thought we'd talk a little bit more about vertex form today for quadratics. And um, you're going to be seeing several videos that will help you understand quadratics and vertex form, standard form, factored form. Eventually, hopefully, we'll get to completing the square. That's a kind of a tricky spot, but I think we can do it. All right. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about vertex form. And I introduced vertex form in our last video. And you are going to be working with Desmos a little bit and kind of exploring some of the uh, transformations that are occurring and happening when you see a graph in vertex form. So that'll be another activity that we'll work on together, which uh, should be fun, hopefully, for you guys. All right. So vertex form, here it is. It is a quadratic in the form y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay. And each of those values of a, h, and k represent something that you can know about drawing your quadratic, sketching your quadratic, or how your quadratic, the parent function, has shifted horizontally or shifted vertically. Okay, and then the a value, remember, tells you how much it has stretched and whether it opens up or opens down. So all those things can, can be seen with this value right here. So if we have an a value of, for example, um, a negative three, that means our parabola is going to be opening down. It's going to be kind of skinny. If we have an h value, of 2 and a k value of 8. What that means when you have an h value of 2 and a k value of 8 is that your vertex is actually located at the point 2, 8. If we were to sketch that graph, that's what that would mean. And it means that you have actually shifted uh, two units horizontally and eight units vertically so it's kind of it's kind of crazy how it how it fits in there and figures out all right so let's go ahead and take a look at how these three numbers jump into your equation and then what it looks like as a graph and then we'll be done for today okay the a value of negative 3, I usually kind of refer to that as the family width. We can talk about that a little bit more in some other examples. Um, it, it really determines how wide or how narrow your parabola is going to end up being. All right, well, let's start with the vertex and plugging everything in. So this is going to be the equation y is equal to a negative 3, jumps in there for our a value, x minus 2 squared, and then plus 8. There you go. So this part of our expression, this part of our expression helps us to know how we move horizontally from our original parent function. This part, that part of our equation helps us to know how much we move the parabola up and down. So that's the vertical shift. Okay. So a graph of this function, if you want to stop right now, you could pause it, maybe sketch a graph on your own, see if that is something that you want to do before I show you the answer. You can just hit pause and then come back. You might want to try that. See if you can use this information to do a little sketch of a quadratic on your own first then come back and it'll look like this. All right, so we have our xy axis. We know that our vertex is going to be at 2, 8. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's going to be a fairly skinny graph. Our family width is about a 3, so I just counted down 3. And to the side, one on either side there, just to kind of give you a, a sense of what that family width is going to look like. And my pen hopefully is showing up. There you go. So if you made your graph like that, look at the great shadows I'm casting on this. Could do some sock 
some shadow shadow puppets later on. Um, that's what your graph should look like. Okay, guys. Hope that went well for you. Make sure you send me an email or log into our um, virtual classroom for questions, and I'll see you then. Okay, bye.